podcast. Check him out. Uh, he's our headliner tonight, so make sure you give him the biggest round of applause because he's been killing it out here. And I'm not just saying that because he put me on this show. Um, give him a big round of applause, folks. We got Mike Bonner. Down Pub and Grill. How are we doing out there? Woo-hoo! Give another round of applause for all of your opening acts. I don't know who the fuck put this goddamn fucking set list together. Jesus. <laughs> Guys out here just killing it. And I am the oldest comedian on the slate. And I don't mean tenure wise, I mean age wise. I didn't bring my mom to this show, so. <laughs> Bring her next to me. No, you don't want to meet her. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> as you can hear, my wife, yes, I am married. That's right, ladies. Sorry, pack it up and hit the bricks. I'm married. That's right. Oh, yeah, she'll cut you. I'm telling you right now. She's, <laughs> she's crazy, but I love her. And I'm not one of these comedians. She's here, she's here tonight. Don't worry. She'll, she's, she knows all these are coming. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but my wife, me and her, I think we work because we are the exact same fucking person. She just has bigger tits. <laughs> Although, she has been fed me a solid A cup right here. Yeah, that's right. I'm wearing a sports bra. It happens. <laughs> Nothing for that, really? No, that's a quality sports bra joke that you're not going to hear any other comic do. Geek down, pub and grill. But no, like I said, we're the same person, and I think we work because as a comic, you know, first off, when I tell people I'm a comic, they try a little extra hard to be funny to me. It's awesome. So, but we don't have a filter, as most of you heard from all the other comics that were on stage, from our head to our mouth. Whatever pops into our head, comes out of our mouth. Same thing happens with my wife. Whatever pops in her head comes right out of her mouth. She has no filter and it's tremendous. We were at Hobby Lobby. Anybody know this store? All right, I don't need to set it up at all. It is the most religious store I've ever been in in my life. They don't do Halloween. I fucking love Halloween. It's one of my favorite holidays. They're not open on Sundays. Yeah, they make Chick-fil-A look like devil worshippers. Uh, we're waiting on you. No, I'm waiting on you to shut the fuck up, Ben Machine. Talking all this shit all day. God damn. Anyways, before Jurassic Park over there fucking interrupted me, um, I can't sit still to save my life. Obviously, I'm a comic. I don't do a lot other than tell weird fucking jokes. We're in Hobby Lobby. We're waiting to check out. Hello. And I'm looking around, and I see something on the shelf that I just have to tell her about. So I nudge her. I said, hey, look at this. What we saw was a comic book Bible. Yeah, that's right. All of the characters in the Bible in comic book form. I shit you not. I really wish I was making this up right now. I'm not. No, I didn't buy it. Because they're selling this for $10. $10. You can get a Bible free at any motel. So I nudged her and I said, hey, fucking okay, look at this. She goes, Oh, is that a comic book Bible? Huh. Ten dollars. I bet they get more if it was signed by the author. <laughs> Nobody knows the author of the Bible is fucking Jesus. <laughs> Speaking of Jesus, look at this guy walking in. Woo! It is beautiful. I wish mine was like that. Maybe not as gray, but Jesus. Literally. 
with a serpent tattoo on his calf. Not even paying attention. All right, we'll move off, okay? <laughs> You're at a comedy show right now, my guy. Talking about your beard and the fucking serpent tattoo on your calf. Yeah, rock on. Woo! Yeah! Oh, Christ. Oh, man. But being married has taught me a lot of things. A lot of things. One, guys, for all the young guys, especially you, Captain Virgin. <laughs> get used to this. You were wrong 100% of the time. Even about the knock-knock joke. <laughs> Wrong. Even though it was her idea, she'll make it your idea. And guess what? Now it's wrong. Mm -hmm. But no, I'm not one of these comics that's going to come up here and shit on my wife. I love my wife to death. I know that's a weird stance for a comic to take. Most of them are like, oh, can't believe I'm married to that bitch. <laughs> Sounds like you married a real treat. Yeah. <laughs> No, because before I found my wife, I had to date a lot of people. Thank you for that, by the way. I mean, you would think laughter at that point would hurt. No, the stunned silence every time I say that part is probably the worst. <laughs> but no, I had to date a lot of people, which I get. It happens. And before I found somebody that couldn't live without me. And I thought that's what you wanted. I'm here to tell you, it's not. It's like having a puppy that can text you. Nobody has puppies. Is, is this a cat crowd? Nobody has puppies? You do? You did. I don't know what that means, and that sounds sad, and we're not, we're not about sadness, but you got really happy when I said dog. I can't hear you, you're gonna have to speak up. Okay, that's it, I'm gonna move on. I have dogs that got old, yeah, that's what happens, we're all old. Brought that energy way down with your old dogs. What the fuck was I talking about before old dogs? Fucking kill the moon in here. What? Yeah, being married. Uh huh. Dogs. Oh, yeah, having a puppy that could text you. Which was my last girlfriend before my wife. Because, you know what? You don't want somebody that can't live without you. What you want is somebody that doesn't need you in the least, but chooses to be with you. Because they love you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening to me. You're so, wow, you go really excited about that. Are you married? No. Good for you. Hey! You married the comedian, sweetheart. Did you not think there was going to be jokes? <laughs> you said yes to this a long time ago, and there's no backsies. Yeah. My, that's why my parents are still together. Because my mom still might leave. This has been 40 years and three kids. She's still not sold on. Dad's vocal about it, too. Like, she does. She's like, I just want to thank you for hanging out. You've been great. <laughs> and I am the spinning image of my father, so I don't know how well that works for me. I'm just taller and way skinnier than he is. I'm not trying to save everyone. Jesus Christ. How many times has that thing gone off? But anyways, like I said, I'm married. We have a kid. He's a real asshole, but I love him. And to, to set this up, he, he's not mine. No, I, I met my wife. We've been together almost seven years. He's 13. You guys can do the math. He's not mine. But a couple years ago, when he was about seven, he's in the bath. Now, he's 
been in there for about 20 minutes. Still taking a bath. Yeah, you laugh. You know what the hell is fucking happening in there, too, don't you? It's not the punchline, but I appreciate it. Ooh. But sitting on the couch with my wife, it's been another 20 minutes. I gotta take a shit. I can't wait anymore. So I walk in. I said, all right, dude. Whatever you're doing, stop it. I don't want to see it, but I gotta take a shit. So just finish your bath and get out of here. I take epic shits. I know I don't look like it, but it takes me about 20 minutes. He's still in the bath. We're at 40 minutes he's been in the goddamn bath. He looks like a raisin. I can't sit there anymore. My feet are tingling and they're numb. I gotta, I gotta be done. Now, at our old house, the bathtub in proximity to the toilet was way closer than it needed to be. It's about for me to that fucking chair away. So I was like, all right, dude, I got a wipe. Just don't look at anything. We'll be fine. You won't be scarred for life. Okay. I stand up. Where do his eyes go? Directly to my fucking shit. And not what's in the toilet. He's got a whole face full of dick and balls. And his immediate reaction was, huh, oh my god. Huh, he got some big balls there. I said, why are you looking? I told you not to look. He goes, what you do? And all I heard from the other room was, I don't know why we're having this conversation, but it needs to stop. <laughs> so I walk out, and I was like, I take it, you heard the whole interaction in there. She goes, yeah, magically he's done with the fucking bath. <laughs> he walks out around the corner. Mommy, you seen the size of Uncle Mike's balls? <laughs> yeah, he called me Uncle Mike. That didn't make it even weirder. That did it. Being called Uncle fucking Mike. <laughs> to this day, seven years, still fucking Uncle Mike. <laughs> been married to his mother for seven goddamn years. I've picked up all the payments on this little dude. Still Uncle Mike. I'm gonna be at his wedding. He's gonna be introduced me again. Mike, my stepdad is Uncle Mike. It's been 40 fucking years. We're waiting on you. I'm glad to see everybody loves their kids, especially the mothers that came to see their comic sons. Do some jokes and some comedy. I, I gotta say though, man, what's your name, ma'am? You, mother, what's your name? Mom? Tammy? Kathy. Alright, Kathy, are you from Minnesota? <laughs> Not today, okay. Well, Kathy, thank you for coming out and supporting your son and doing what he wants to do and uh, doing that for what my parents are ashamed that I do. It's been 10 years of doing comedy. Guess how many shows they've been to? Zero! <laughs> Not a one. Good for you. Good for fucking you. You come to every show. Do you have to take him? He looks like a young buck. Are you legal to be in here, my guy? I don't know. I like what? You're holding up a drink that looks like Pepsi. You get you got a beard, but I had a beard like fucking Tito Ortiz up here. But it's burnt. My son shaves. Your son shaves? Not very well. I can see a beard from here, and it's a dark room. He trims it. Well, good for him. I mean, he's supposed to. He doesn't want to look like fucking Santa Claus that walked in over there. He's not paying attention. I can talk about him all day. I can see myself in his head. I've been talking. Five minutes I've been fucking talking about you, man. Like, What's going on? We're talking about balls over here. I don't even know what Talking about balls? Yeah, we're talking about balls. Shaving balls. You said shaving. Somebody said to get shaving his balls. I didn't know what was going on. That's funny. 
and my last joke was about my son seeing my balls for the first Whoa! time. That is traumatic for the kid, I know. It is. I got two sons, that's why. <laughs> Yeah, how old, are you, how, how old are your kids? Uh, so my daughter's 24, son's 16, and the other one is 10. What the fuck happened there? That's called Space Hotel, so you get a babysitter on the rest of the day. You're married, you know what's up. Come on now. Yeah, I have one. He's enough. We got, he's got a lot of aunts and uncles, and, nice. well, two of them live two hours away from us, so they're not babysitting anytime soon, but uh, one of his uncles is one of his teachers in school, and since the pandemic, is there any teachers in the audience? No. Everybody should have fucking applauded, because did we not remember the pandemic when everybody had to become a makeshift fucking teacher? What damn Zoom? Yeah, Zoom teaching with its dog. It was bullshit. It was bullshit. It did make me realize one thing, though. I have no idea how I graduated college. No fucking clue. He was in fifth grade at the time during the pandemic. I realized fifth grade math, fucking out. I can't help him with this common core bullshit. We got an issue going on in the kitchen. Did somebody piss off the wait staff here? Somebody's getting spit in their food right now. That is a look. You? Dude. Oh, shit. What? That almost sounds like surprise ale or something. Hey, who's the fucking comedian right now, man? You take all the goddamn jar. You, you're not coming up next. I'm the last fucking comic to come up here. So. <laughs> no, it's not. I'll unplug the mic and walk away. I got paid. <laughs> Holy shit. Surprise <laughs> anal. <laughs> Only if you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Apparently you don't know what to do. You got three fucking kids. It depends on how many shots I've had, alright? How many have you had? A room full of nerds. You guys love sex jokes and dick jokes and fucking Santa Claus right here. Yeah, we're waiting on you. What's your name, man? Big Daddy. Big Daddy? Big Daddy. Hey! I'm a semi celebrity in Brunswick, so it doesn't, you know. Semi celebrity in Brunswick. <laughs> Like a 
lot of the comments that you heard Christian up here talking about uh, stupid people. I hate stupid people. I hate them. I go, oh, it's cute, they're stupid. No, fuck that. This whole thing, that there's no such thing as a stupid question, bullshit, ends in high school. This is life, and we're playing for points, and there are a shit ton of stupid questions. I've worked in retail for 11 years. Yeah, welcome to my hell. Where do you work, man? Giant Eagle. Giant Eagle. Yeah. I mean, I worked in sales. That's even worse. My last job was for a big furniture chain called Big Sandy's. Big Sandy Superstore, or as I called it, Large Sandra's. I worked in the bedding department. I sold mattresses for a living. Yeah, welcome to my world. You didn't, you wouldn't think there'd be a lot of stupid questions when it came to a mattress, would you? You're fucking wrong. The big thing they wanted me to push was the mattress pads that went over top of the mattresses to help with stains. Well. Some wrong turn looking motherfucker walks into my department. And he comes up to me. He's asking for a mattress. Obviously, I have them. So I was like, yeah, man, feel free to walk around. I tell you to lay on the beds, but it looks like you're going to do that regardless of whatever I tell you to do. Go into my whole, sp my whole spiel about the fucking mattress pads they want me to push. The big things was... Keeps your mattress free of any stains. I think we're all smart enough here to understand what that means. Would I be correct in saying that if something protected from all stains? Yeah, you're giving me a kind of a fucked up look, kind of like he did when I explained it to him. Called rubbers? Yeah, Kathy, what are you talking about over there? Single mom, you trying to pick up this young buck to be a stepdad to him? Anyways, this kid goes, Well, I'm going to think about it for a minute. I'll be back. <laughs> and just walks out of my store. Not two minutes later, son of a bitch shows back up. And goes, hey. When you said it protected from all stains, what did you mean? And he made that crunch when he asked me what I mean. What did you mean? I was like, I mean, water, soda, whatever. He goes, anything else? <laughs> I was like, sir, what are you asking? How many bodies do you have tied up in your bedroom that you're worried about apparently blood and a lot of semen? He goes, well, you're just rude. <laughs> no, you inbred motherfucker. Stains. What stains? And I know you think I'm doing the voice. No, that's a spot-on impression of what he fucking sounded like. <laughs> Another question I've heard is I've worked at a call center before. It was for Spectrum in their billing department. Which, yeah, oh God is right, yeah. A hundred calls a day. And nobody's calling to say, hey, thanks. A lot of times you get the easy calls with people just wanting to pay their bill, which is fine. It happens. I'm at a call center. This one lady in Colorado calls in. And goes, hey, I want to pay my bill. And I was like, well, you're in luck. You called the right person. How do you want to pay? Check or card? She goes, I want to pay with cash. Well, 
looking at it here, seven stores within your vicinity that you can go and pay cash to. Now that's a reasonable response to that question. I'm trying to be professional. These calls are recorded. She goes, well, why can't I pay over the phone with you? You most certainly can, with a card or a check. I want to pay cash. Okay. You're going to have to go to one of these stuff. No, I'm not going anywhere. I'm paying cash with you. How do you plan to do that, ma'am? You're in Colorado. I'm in Ohio. How do you plan on getting me cash? Can I just fax it into you? She thought she could put money into a fucking fax machine and it was just going to magically wire transfer across the goddamn country to me in Ohio. I hung up on her. Clearly, I don't work there anymore because I was the rudest person on the planet to these fucking stunads on the fucking phone. How much weed was that bitch? Colorado, she, yeah. All of it, all of the weed was what she was smoking. That's why we're on a drought. What the fuck does that even mean? Not enough of Big Daddy, I think you're a little happy. He's not, not enough good high is what he is. Jesus Christ. Eat out public bro. You guys are phenomenal. Except for Big Daddy who keeps stealing all my jokes. <laughs> Be fucking hysterical. 
You guys don't think so, but locals would sit by highways and watch out of towners kill themselves if they didn't. Hey, look, that dude, he didn't see it. He didn't see it. <laughs> he was messing with his iPhone. Now he's dead. <laughs> now, what do most of us do? We see the sign, this lane's about to end. We say, oh no, this lane's about to end. I live in a society. I would like for that to progress. And we get over it. But then Jeremy Bluetooth decides he needs to get home a sixth of a second faster than the rest of us. And he uses the remainder of the lane to pass everybody. And then he thinks we're just going to let him in. Assholes. They're all Jeremy. They're all named Jeremy. So if you meet a Jeremy. Jeremy, depends on what you drive. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it fucking doesn't. Okay, if you drive a truck. Okay. Oh, keep going. I drive a truck. Keep going. I'm a douchebag. Yeah, there's a law. Thou who is bigger is thou who goes first. Why you, yeah. You think I'm not gonna see you? You move three fucking feet. And you move to the middle of the goddamn stage. Ooh. Good for you. Proud of you, driving up. What year? 11? It's all right. We walk up to him, 
guy was already just waiting for our tow truck, so we decided to sit there and talk to him for a little bit. And he looks at us and he goes, hey, where are y'all from? My dad goes, well, we're up in the northern panhandle, about an hour outside of Pittsburgh. He goes, oh, you're one of them up there. Dem up there. Uh, we're waiting on you. Okay, this is going to be awesome. He goes, oh, I'm from down here where the men are men and the sheep are scared. <laughs> I said, peace out, Dad. I'll be back in the car with the girls. You can hang out with the fucking hillbilly. I'm not fucking doing that anymore. <laughs> Jesus. Men are men and the sheep are scared. Needless to say, I don't go to the southern part of the state of West Virginia anymore. You feel bad for the sheep? Yeah. Bestiality jokes are fun, aren't they? Holy shit, I did not realize you were that small, old dogs. No, 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 no. Are you old enough to be in here? Wow. This is a little thing. <laughs> she keeps pointing like that's gonna do it. Like that's gonna draw my attention away. Get the stand up. Stand up. You fucking lying son of a bitch. He's four inches taller than her. Jesus Christ. Guess coming to Geeked Out Pub and Grill, I should expect to see a couple of leprechauns in the fucking audience. <laughs> For those of you who can't see, my wife, who is full blooded Irish, just gave me the dirtiest look I have ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a long drive home. <laughs> Anyways, like I said, my dad was raised by immigrant parents. This is, this is going to be the last couple jokes I do here. And my grandfather, I love him to death. He's part of the reason I got into comedy. Because his main goal in life at 84 years of age is to sit and write jokes down in a notebook and laugh to himself. And then he decides to tell my grandmother these jokes. Like, she fucking gives a shit. They've been together 60 years. I don't even know why they stay in the same room together. But the craziest thing happens to my grandfather. He likes, they live up on a big hill in West Virginia. He likes to sit out, watch the sunsets, take pictures of animals and stuff like that. Now, that being said, he's a bird feeder in his backyard. It's not a problem. Most people have bird feeders in their backyards. The problem is, apparently, my grandfather has pissed off the entire species of birds. I am 34 years old. I have not had one interaction with a goddamn bird. Not pleasant, not being attacked by them, nothing. My, yeah, they are assholes. I have a parent who's an asshole. You have a parent? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> My grandfather, in the past year, and I really wish I was making this number up, has been attacked by 35 fucking birds. <laughs> I don't think you guys are picturing this. It's an old, bald man, not as bald as Big Daddy, but he does have the prone done, sitting on his back porch just trying to enjoy nature. And nature is saying, hey, fuck you, Dago. And they have attacked, I am one, I can say that. And they've attacked him so many times to the point where he's had to be stitched up. <laughs> My mother, who's a nurse, has had to go over to his house so many times to stitch up the top of his head because he has been attacked by birds. 
that many times. I couldn't even tell you what a bird looks like up close. I mean, I've been shit on a buck before, but that's supposed to be good luck. My dad's deterrent was, hey, I'm just going to move the bird feather further away from your chair, Dad. Do you think that would work? No. My grandfather's fantastic brain goes, ah, the bird feeder is a little too far away. I need to move my chair back closer to the goddamn feeder so I can keep getting attacked by fucking pigeons and shit. <laughs> I'll leave you guys with this. It's about my time. Like I said before, I'm married, got a kid now. I had to date a lot of people. But one girl that I dated was the craziest person that I know. First time I stayed in her place, she comes up to me and goes, hey, you need to sleep on this side of the bed. I said, that's fine. Is the other side like your side? Or something she goes no you need to sleep here because it's closest to the door in case somebody breaks in and tries to rape me you'll be on that side <sighs> since this has happened a lot because it was gotten to the point where you kind of start to prepare for it I think you have grounds to break your lease and that also makes me think that you think I might sleep through a rape. And what do you think's gonna happen? He's gonna break in, get all the way to the bedroom, and go, no, fuck it, she's on the other side. <laughs> I'm laying right next to you, all right? Worst comes to worst, fucking nudge me. So let it be. Straight nudge. Because I tell you what, if a dude broke in and started raping me, I was waking her ass up. Believe that. looking for you. Alright, Brunswick, Ohio, Geeked Out Public Grill, that is my time and that is your show. Thank you all so much for coming out and enjoying some comedy. This was a lot of fun. Don't forget, check all the comedians out on social media and if you don't tip your wait staff, I will find you.